and welcome, I am your Code Monkey, and in this series we're making Snake in Unity. In this video we're going to grow our snake every time we eat some food. Let's begin. Okay, so here is our scene. We have our snake that we can move around with the keyboard, and as you can see we also have some food in our map, and if I move towards it, yep, the snake eats it, and the food is spawned in a new position. I go back to it, I eat it again, and the new one is spawned, and so on and so forth. Okay, so now we need to make our snake grow every time we eat something. So here in our snake class, we need some variables to store and handle the size of the snake. So let's make in here a private int for the snake body size. This will store the size of the body of the snake. So when it's zero, we only have the head. When not zero, it contains the number of body segments. And then we also need to store where the snake has been. So we know where to locate our body parts. So for that, let's define a list of vector two ints. This will be used when we need to add size to our snake body. So now let's fill up this list. So for that, we go into the place where we are handling our grid movement. And in here, before we actually move our snake, let's add the current position to the list. So go into the snake move position list and we insert into index zero and let's insert our current grid position. So we insert the current position into the position list, then we move our snake. And after that, we need to test if the list is too big based on the snake body size. So in here we simply do if Okay, so we check how many elements we have stored in our list. If the number of elements is bigger than or equal to the body size plus one, so one more than we need, then we simply remove the very last one on the list. Okay, so this is very simple and it should be working. So for testing, let's spawn something just to be able to see the snake size. So after we validate our snake position list, let's do a simple cycle. And here let's simply spawn a square so we can see where the snake move position list is currently holding. So for that I'm going to create a world sprite. This is part of the CodeMonkey utilities, it simply lets me very simply create a sprite. So let's position it where this body part would be. And let's also create a function timer so we can destroy this world sprite before the snake moves again. Okay, so this is just for testing, but it should be working. Essentially, we are cycling through the move position list. We create a sprite on that move position. And the next time we move, we destroy that sprite. So essentially, our sprites will always be created and destroyed just so we can visually see where our snake has been. And also for testing, let's set the snake body size to one. So we have one body part walking behind the head and obviously initialize our list. Okay, there's our snake, and as you can see, it has a body part standing behind it. And I can move up and to the left and down, and yep, it's falling. Let's test with a couple more body size. And yep, there it is. As you can see, all the positions are correctly following the snake. Now we have multiple positions, and they follow exactly where the snake has been. All right, so we are correctly storing the positions we need to place the body. Now, all we need to do is actually grow our snake when we eat our food. So previously we were handling the food like this. We were simply telling the level grid that the snake had moved into a certain position and then the level grid checks if that grid position matches the food and if so destroys and spawns a new food. However, we also need the snake to know if any food was eaten. So in here let's rename this function into try snake eat food. In order to quickly rename things in Visual Studio you can simply hit Control RR and it allows you to rename a method and as you can see, all the references to that method get renamed automatically. So now with a more proper name, try snake eat food, let's also return a boolean. So essentially this will return true if the snake has eaten some food and false if not. So in this case, it has indeed eaten the food. So in here we return true and if not, we return false. So now we can go back into our snake and now the return value of this function is if the snake has eaten some food. So bool snake ate food and if the snake ate food then snake ate food grow body and then in here all we do is snake body size increase now we want to run this code before we validate our snake body size so in here 
So we modify the grid position, we test if the snake has eaten some food, if so we increase the body size and then we check the amount of values that are currently in our position list. So just like that we should now be correctly increasing in size whenever we eat some food. So let's go up here and we no longer need this for testing so let's put this at zero as it should be and see if the snake body does increase. Okay, there's the snake moving around. I'm going to go and eat that piece of food. And when I get there, yep, the body now has one size. Now I eat another one and let's see if it grows. And yep, we now have a body with a size of two. Eat another one and now we should have three and so on. And as you can see, the body is correctly following exactly where the snake has been and everything is working perfectly fine. So now that we have a snake body, we need to once again fix the issue we had previously regarding the food spawn. In here, if you remember, first of all, we were only doing this, which picks a completely random position in our grid. However, that could mean that it could spawn right on top of the head, which is not what we wanted. So that's why we added this cycle in order to make sure that the food grid position is never on top of the snake. But right now the snake has a body, so it cannot spawn on top of the head of the snake or any of the body parts. So here in our snake, let's make a function to return the complete snake grid position. So here we have a very simple function that returns the complete snake grid position list. So we create a new list that we are going to return. We initially set it with the grid position, which is the head grid position. And then we add the snake move position list, which contains all the positions of the body. So now we can go back into the level grid. And here we generate a random position. And we keep generating while So we keep generating whilst this position is found inside of our grid position list. So it means this one is occupied, so generate one again, again, and so on. So let's test just to make sure we never see any food spawning on top of the body. And just like that, here's our snake with a very large body. And you can see that whenever I eat some food, it spawns a new one and it does not spawn right on top of the body. So there you have it. We set up our snake class to be aware of where it's been so we can increase the size of our body whenever the snake eats some food. In the next video, we're going to add some proper snake body sprites. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time.